Datuk Sri, I have a question. In the last elections, Pakatan Raya won 80 parliament seats in West Malaysia, while Barisan won 85. But we lost because we won only one seat in parliament for Sarawak and one seat for Sabah. So it's obvious to me the real fight to Putrajaya may not rest, so may not rest just in West Malaysia, but the power of us to win over Putrajaya is going to come from typically Sabah and hopefully some from Johor. What is YB Dato Sri's view of the confidence level that we can actually win some seats from Sabah or maybe even Sarawak, which has been typically a fixed deposit for Barisan National? Yes, we didn't do well in Sabah and Sarawak. Most of the states in the south, particularly Laka and Johor. But we have made uh, enormous inroads into the Bismillah and Laka and the west coast of uh, Johor. But I think the better ground here uh, would remain, but I think and I believe looking at the performance of Pene, Kelantan, Kedah, Selangor, and um, the way they brought Perak State Government, I think not only would we be uh, able to consolidate, but I think we would be able to garner more seats from the states. And I can say that. We have made, as you know, um, huge votes into Sabah. There are two reasons. The RCI, for the Commission of Inquiry, have established some uh, shocking revelations about fraud, about corruption, about plain abuse. This is, is in, in, in the record of the RCI. It's now known to the public. And uh, there's a lot of uh, anger. There was an early assumption that is, the anger stems mainly in Mantakarazan and Morukusu, non-Muslims or Christians. The Muslims think it would, uh, is now quite, was quite happy that the arrangement could benefit them. But the latest survey indicate, to the contrary, the vast majority of Muslims of Sabah no longer control these sort of excesses and abuses. And in the Lahatatu incident, although they tried to insinuate that I was involved, so other than Super 007, I'm now the new agent of Sulu. <laughs> but uh, they have now, but, but they are local Sulus, by the way. We should not be confused. We are, the, we are not waging war against the Sulus. We are waging war against the militant insurgents who they call terrorists. I don't believe that uh, we should show any mercy or even condone the presence of militant operations in our land. We have to be swift and effective. Questions raised by the ex-generals is why the long protracted period of so-called negotiations whatever for more than three weeks, why the failure of our intelligence uh, agencies and why the body became so porous that you were not able to detect the coming up and bringing up of arms and armed personnel and then moving out into back to the Philippines unnoticed. And to the generals, this was clearly unacceptable. I'm not in a position to say more other than quoting the generals, but we, of course, support the general uh, response by the armed forces in these operations. Now, so somehow to my mind, uh, has been quite strong with us, but then with the other incidents, contrary to public perceptions here, because initially the first few weeks they were on the offensive, um, implicating or insinuating the involvement of the opposition, I checked and finally the Malakanya uh, presidential palace, where the, then I was given a full statement by President Nono Aquino, there may some reference of the involvement of some opposition in the Philippines. Now, I cannot be a leader of opposition in the Philippines. <laughs> but the situation here is, of course, the standard joke here is uh, any problem, and they blame it on Anon. So when Real Madrid uh, defeated Manchester United, 
They say, I know I must be responsible. Because the referee he happens to be a Turk. And I was a friend of Prime Minister Taibanoga in Turkey. So they through that sort of link, then they established that I was quite responsible. Now, um, so, so I'm very optimistic. Now, let us look at Sarawak. Now, Sarawak, they say, um, now with the latest revelation in this global witness video, which has gone viral hundreds and thousands, this matter of days, and it's going to be happening in Sarawak. And um, I believe, I mean, I, I was just there in Ulu Raja uh, two days, three days back, uh, on this journey of this, by uh, road to Ulu Raja. And the uh, reception is unprecedented. I mean, I am, yes, I've been in politics for some time, and, and realistic, I'm not, I'm not just uh, giving false hopes, no. I was there, people can walk miles. I'm just talking about their life. The ancestral land. And, and uh, you, you think that people can be stupid enough not to know that, that the land has been uh, confiscated or squandered by the government and the complicity of some of the companies. And this, is, and this has enraged them. So it's not only the, the Chinese uh, belt, the majority of Chinese seats, but they're going to even some of the Iban and Oranguru areas. Mind you, the two seats that we want. Uh, one, uh, I mean, in, in the indigenous uh, uh, tribes, uh, tribal areas, one is 95 percent Iban, the other is 95 percent Oromo, the most people. So there is that possibility of uh, penetration into the rural heart. So I am, I am very optimistic. Uh, God willing, inshallah, we will give uh, substantial uh, seats enough uh, to form the next government, probably short of the two-third majority which we don't need, actually. Uh,